Hi, this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Um, joining me today is Ben Kinsley, who is executive director for Campaign for Vermont, my co-host and um, co-producer. And very special guest today, somebody I've worked with for over 10 years, the mayor of Barry City, Tom Lozon. Tom, welcome. Well, thank you. Yes. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Well, we're excited oh, to have you Only 10 here. years, Pat? Well, it's probably longer than that. I'm, Listen, I'm you're much younger than I am, but we've worked together longer than <laughs> I think so. Well, in Barry City. <laughs> In when Barry you were City. my boss boss. So, but I represented uh, you in the, when I was in the legislature. You did. You so represented we've, we've a lot of people been in the around, legislature. Been around. So I think you all know the mayor from being in his job as mayor, but I thought maybe you could spend a few minutes. We asked our guests to tell a little bit about themselves. And you have a Jersey background, so I was very interested in... <laughs> <laughs> People were fascinated by that. Uh, yeah, lived in New Jersey for a period of time. My dad... Uh, Worked down in New Jersey when I was two years old. I was actually born in Bennington, Vermont. Oh. And, yeah, and, and lived in Bennington uh, until I was two. And then we moved to New Jersey. I always tell people it just makes it much less complicated to say, and for the most part, I did grow up in Barrie. Yeah. You know, I was oh. in elementary school. You when were we born moved to here. You're, you're better off. I was born in New Jersey, so. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> so, you know, fondly, I remember the days, uh, you know, in Middletown, New Jersey, not far from, you know, Bruce Springsteen land and yes, the Jersey there you go. Shore. So I remember those days fondly. But, you know, like I said, to keep it simple, I just call myself a Vermonter. Well, you are if you were born here. So. <laughs> that's right. That's the, that's the litmus exactly. test, right? Yeah. There you so go. So you finally saw the light and moved to Barrie. And, uh, saw the light. Parents yeah. saw the light and uh, moved to Barrie. And like I said, grew up in, uh, grew up in Barrie, um, you know, roaming the, roaming the hills up along, uh, you know, Onward Avenue. We used to race uh, buggies up there when the <laughs> lieutenant governor wasn't much older. Excuse me, the governor now wasn't much older than uh, than I was. We right. used to race buggies up there. There and, you go. Yeah. Very so nice. It was, a, it was a great childhood, and it was a simpler time, no doubt about and that. And your work history is a CPA? Work history started out in investment banking in New York. Right. Uh, met my wife, Karen. Wasn't my wife at the time. Uh, she's a country girl. She wanted nothing to do with the big city. And, um, you know, so it was a good move. So I came back here to... Uh, Vermont, and I've worked in public accounting pretty much ever since. That's Been a great. partner at Salvador and Babic for about 25 years now. Was uh, started with them almost 30 years ago right. now. So it's uh, been fantastic. And you got your development company. Yeah, and uh, well, I mean that really started when um, that started when the when the children were younger. We had Miranda, um, so we've got two children. Alex is uh, he's a master's candidate up at UVM right now, and Miranda oh, nice. actually Good works in him. Washington. DC, and when we had Miranda, we just decided Karen needed to stay home. You know, she needed to raise our children, and that was important. And then when the kids went off to school, Karen was getting a little bored, so we started buying real estate, and uh, bought more and more, <laughs> and more exactly. and more. And uh, you know, she really runs the development company. I mean, I put the budget together. I've got. I'm a little bit the visionary. We're a perfect. I think anyway. Maybe she would beg to differ. I think we're the perfect pair because I'm very broad stroke. I'm not a detail guy. Right. And she is very detail oriented. So I can get detailed when it comes to putting a budget together or numbers. Then I, I force myself to be detailed and right. set, you know, ground rules in terms of project costs and whatnot. But in terms of making sure the projects run well, that's her forte. That's great. Yeah. That's a good partnership. Well, you guys are great together anyway. I always, said, you I always know, enjoy listen, seeing I got, you two I out. got the better end yes, of the deal. Uh, she she got, got screwed. Yes, I keep going to her. See, see him? See? He's always complimenting. And she, <laughs> you know, Dad, you got to be honest. You, you know, I believe in that. My parents have been married. Uh, my father's 89. My mom's 88. And they've been married for over 60 years. And so, you know, we kind of live by that example. And oh, they're okay. a great team. And yeah, she's my. She truly yeah. is my best well, friend. Well, you can see it in your kids too. May I say that's very <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, thank you. So let's. I just wanted to talk a little bit because we've all been watching Barry um, mm -hmm. go through a lot of changes with yeah. the uh, uh, the Main Street redo. And mm -hmm. what are what are the the really key projects that that you look to? The, I mean, um, I just know the Aldridge Block and and City yeah. Place, but there's some great projects that you've done in Barry City. Yeah, that we, uh, I mean, Karen and I have done some great projects and we have encouraged other developers to do great projects. Um, you know, obviously the Blanchard Block. I love oh, that, I I love that building. That. I am yeah. totally yes. jealous of the Benoits and the Nicholsons yeah. because I just marvel at that building. Uh, every time it's I go in there. It's beautiful inside. Have you ever been inside it? I don't know it it's stunning. Inside, I... And, uh, 
You know, they were actually, uh, originally, they had responded to the city's RFP when the city was trying to develop City Place. They had right. responded to our RFP. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we, didn't, we, we weren't able to choose them. Um, they were so gracious and so kind. But during that process, they started looking around the downtown, and they noticed the Blanchard Block. Right. And they came to me, and they said, well, you know, DEW is going to do City Place. We'd like to do the Blanchard Block. Right. And so... The city, uh, you know, supported them as best we could, but uh, you know, that's all them. You know, what's amazing about that building, even just the uh, the sign that says Blanchard. Yeah. It's so beautifully done. It's simple and and elegant, and it just sticks. I love it. I, it's stunning. I, I they love should it. be, and I, and I hope they're proud of that. I'm proud of them, and I hope they're proud of that that's building. Great. They did a so fantastic job. So you have the job. city place. So city place, you know, the Aldrich, Aldrich. block. That was one of our projects, and uh, you know, I look at that building not necessarily because of the real estate. But what happened, you know, kind of because of it, um, you know, the cornerstone has oh. been has been just a great right. business for Barry, and and all of our businesses are great, and everyone brings something. Uh, but that has really turned into be this sort of gathering place oh, where every you know you see everybody there, right. and uh, a great place for people to gather. And and I love their story from the first time that I met Keith and Rich. I knew, you know, I looked at Karen. I said, we got to figure a way to make this happen right. because I, you know, these were. Two young men who had uh, grown up in Barrie, were best friends in high school, went their separate ways after high school and college, and but all we said, you know, someday we're going to come back and we're going to we're going to move back to our hometown. You know, the story that makes you feel good. Right. We're going to move back and we're going to do something great. Right. And the timing was just right. And uh, you know, Rich was uh, running the uh, British Beer Company down in Boston. Keith had owned the Common Man. Keith sold the Common Man, and right. they just. You know, I mean, how many people would do that? Just right. throw everything up in the air and say, "No, we're going to come do and something." And then they've in our got hometown. one or two. They've got the. Um, yeah, they've done. Mexican they went on to do the one in Northfield. Yeah. They did uh, two local guys. Right, they've got a great guys. catering business. They run the country yeah. club. The, Good for the them. Uh, kitchen at the country club. They're just, you know, they're exactly what Barry and Vermont needs. I mean, they're right. just, you know, high energy young people. Yeah. You know, I can only go so long. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can last I'm about right, 14 right, hours right, a day. Right, right. We need more young people who go 18 hours a well, day. Well, and they're and also then, very nice, yeah. and they'll spend time just sitting talking to you if you ask them a question. They're it's awesome, and place. always willing to, uh, you know, always willing to step up for a good cause. That's you great. know, always yes. willing to, very always willing focused. to try to do something to raise money right. for a good cause in right. the community. So we're pretty proud of them. You know, uh, honestly, I, I, I try to be proud of everything we do. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, we've given back, um, we've made investments in um, a, fl a few local businesses right. that, quite frankly, are between Karen and I and the local business. But, you know, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud that, that our success has enabled Karen and I to help another small business when mm -hmm. folks are trying to get going either with advice or sometimes with a little bit of capital. Well, I think I told you Steve McKenzie, the city manager, was quoted as saying, when you succeed, Barry succeeds and sometimes tenfold uh, because it reaps well, the benefits because so. you do a, you really do care about Barry. I can. I love I my I love my yeah, hometown. I know. So uh, did you? Uh, you had a question. Well, I was just gonna say, like Barry has totally transformed over the last decade. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I won't name names, but I I did some door knocking in Barry <laughs> um, several years ago, and uh, what what you drive through town today, it is. Totally different. Right. Not mm -hmm. only do you have businesses that are thriving downtown, you have businesses that are expanding right. mm -hmm. downtown, uh, which I think is incredible. I mean, y ten years ago, I don't think anyone would have thought that that was yeah. what was going to happen. And you see people walking at night on the streets, which right. is, which is what here in, in uh, Montpelier, I think they've got the same people to be concerned about. But there's so many people walking at night, you really don't. Mm -hmm. Notice they're sort of in the in, in the shadows, sort mm -hmm. of, um, and that's what uh, Barry needs. Gets more people walking on the streets at night. Well, you know, and the interesting thing, Pat, about my service, and people have asked me, well, you know, what are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for the people that I've gotten to meet, people right. that I never would have crossed paths with, and you know, kind of interesting about you know, sometimes I hear those comments about people people walking on the street who make right. others nervous, right. and. What I always ask people is, well, what are they doing? Yeah, right. Okay, Nothing. maybe maybe they look different. <laughs> right. Maybe they're poor. Right. You know what? Sometimes when I see a guy in the street with a cup mm -hmm. out, I feel uncomfortable, and right. I feel I feel almost embarrassed for my success, and I feel a little uncomfortable right. that you come face to face with the fact that people like that exist. And well, right. guess what? They do exist. They do. So I always ask people, well, 
all right, when you pass someone in the street who doesn't look like you or maybe doesn't dress like you, well, what are they doing to you? Right. You know, are they yelling at you? No. Did they hit you? No. Yep. Spit at you? Yep. No. Yep. Then what's your problem? <laughs> I mean, just you keep know what? Do, no, yeah, do say what hi. I do. Learn to say hello. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, learn to say, how are you? Right. You know, because that's somebody's brother or father or sister or mom. You know, just Good treat point, them nice. Mr. And Mayor. I've never had them an issue. So, Except for this one time with Santa Claus. But. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about that. But don't, don't, he don't, wasn't friendly. Don't, 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 <laughs> that was, we can skip to that. You tackled, he tackled Santa Claus when Santa I, Claus I heard this threw story. a pie in Governor Douglas's face. <laughs> they called yeah. you a very hands-on ma uh, manager, mayor. So, yeah. Yeah. He was in a Santa Claus outfit, wasn't he? He was in a Santa Claus suit. And, uh, yeah, it was a young man who was upset with Governor Douglas for yeah. some reason. And, um, yeah, in the 4th of July parade, Karen and I, we were a ways back. It was an election year. And so we had our, you know, Jim Douglas. And the governor was always so gracious. And he's like, well, come, you know, walk with Dorothy and I. And I said, no, we'd really prefer to, we'd like to blend. Right. What we yeah. really wanted to do yes. was cut out of the parade route early and, <laughs> exactly. and, go, and go over and enjoy <laughs> what everyone wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what yeah. we wanted to do. So we were, we had our, you know, Jim, Jim Douglas t-shirts on and, and we were kind of back. And I honestly, I didn't see what happened at the time. I mean, we were walking a little oh. ways back. I heard people scream, and then I just saw this saw this guy running, and I knew something had happened. Right. So I kind of had the angle on him, and took off. You know, the, took off, there and the rest go. is history. It's That's something that you know anybody else would have done. That's and right. uh, you know, thankfully for that young man, he didn't try that in Massachusetts or New York because he probably wouldn't yeah. have made it within three steps no, of the totally. governor, and he would have had a bullet in his head. Right. So. You know, but and, I thought, and in a Santa's yeah. outfit, it's sort of hard to blend in. Most of, that was bad thinking on <laughs> yeah. his part. Yeah. It wasn't hard, you're to, supposed to wasn't blend hard to pick him out in the crowd. I wanted to know where I want to know where he got a pie at a parade. I yeah, mean, right, walking yeah. around with a, it wasn't a, it was just a, it wasn't actually a pie pie. It was a it was a tin that had whipped cream in it. So oh, there was no okay. oh, it wasn't a whole pie oh, with see, pie oh. filling and all of that stuff. And yeah, so we um, so we ended up you know detaining him. And so I got in on the act, and I was kind of holding him down. And then, and then Karen shows up, and she's got her mace out that she right, carries Karen. in her purse. Okay. And she's, you know, she just... doing, and I'm like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> that stuff works. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's a cute little, it, I don't know, it's a cute little footnote, but yeah, that was just, just Jim Douglas is a do what is has a kind to be and done. thoughtful man, and yeah. and. You know, listen, I, I have no issue with peaceful protest. Yep. This, you know, this kneeling thing is going on right now, and I know some people get really worked up right. about it. I'd be one of those. It, it's, you know what? No, I don't do it, Pat. Yeah. I will no. always stand with my hand over my heart, honoring America and honoring do the flag, think? but you got to respect the rights of those who don't. And I respect, do I think it's right? No, I don't. It's not something I choose to do, right. but I'm not... I'm not going to get all crazy because they're doing it. I'm not. I'm not going to get dragged down that rabbit hole right, right. because when you get upset and when you start ranting, you're ineffective. <laughs> I jump right down it every time. I, I no. I, I will it. do my best to you know. I will do you know. On the sixth of December, uh, I'll be presenting. Uh, Karen and I were in France recently, and for the first time, I've always made Memorial Day in Barry City. I've always made Veterans Day. It, it means something to me. And, but I had promised to take her to France. And oh. so with the promise came a condition. And my condition was, I'll be take home. you to France, but on Veterans Day, I've got to be on the beach at Normandy. Oh, and I've got my to be God. there. I've got to be at the American Memorial oh. on Veterans Day. And you can have the other 15 days as long as I'm there. And awesome. Karen never lets me down, so we were there. And it was moving. I mean, there were you know, hundreds of French citizens who came and, you know, of course, there's 10,000 crosses at the memorial. Right. And, uh, you know, there were hundreds of French citizens who came and put a flower, oh, uh, you crying. know, on a grave and, and on a cross. And I asked a few of them, I said, you know, was this a relative or did you know this person or are you somehow connected? No. And they looked at me kind of incredulously and said, no, we, you know, we don't forget in France. Wow. We remember. And wow. so they would just come and offer a, you know, remembrance at a grave of a young soldier that they never knew. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so I was very touched. And uh, so on the 6th of December, I'll actually be at the VFW because I managed to uh, get some sand from, oh. the, from Omaha Beach. Yeah. And uh, so Karen and I put a little put together, uh, you know, just a little remembrance from us of our trip. Wonderful. And some pictures of Omaha Beach along with some sand. And we're going to present that oh, to our local VFW. Tom, that's wonderful. Saying, I'm sorry I missed Veterans Day for the first time, right. but I 
But um, I didn't miss it. No, I was in didn't. France honoring folks there. Good for you. Whoa. Well, That's I'm cool. going to cry. We should come. <laughs> <laughs> I do where this stuff gets me. But back to the development, because I really yes. do want to spend time talking about you as mayor. I do jump around. Yes, I, well, we got it. We got it. So, um, and I don't know how, where this is right now, but your $30 million project that you're calling Park Center, yep. you presented it to the council, yes. and then a whole series of things <laughs> happened, which if I was you, that I would really have been. really went well. <laughs> Well, we, you and I had that a shared experience over the railroad a yeah. meeting we had. People do that. Yeah. Somebody on the council let out some things. Um, and, and that's okay. I mean, or somebody, you know, who knows about listen, picking on the council? Sometimes people have a hard time separating me from the projects, yeah. and you've got to, you know, first of all, the, the big objection was that one of our buildings, in order to accommodate this development, one of our buildings would have to get torn down and somehow contributed, and so oh. obviously we would be, um, you know, we would be compensated for the building. Well. First of all, we'd be compensated at appraised value. Right. Um, we had agreed to um, donate a hundred thousand dollars back to the city's uh, economic development center. Um, and you let know, me just tell you, this is where it's all it's vacant now. Those stores, correct. where um, yeah. what was the famous clothing store was? Homer Fitz. Homer Fitz. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Homer. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's that whole block there. So you know so. Again, you got to keep things in context. The value of our property, when compared to the entire project, uh, was about one percent. You know, so we were about we were about one percent of the project. Now, as a private developer, uh, it's something I wanted to see happen. I made it clear right from the beginning: we're not going to be the only developer. I mean, this is a thirty huge, to forty million dollar grocery, project. Because you've got grocery, conference yeah. center, hotel. It's a big lift. Upscale apartments. Yeah. It's a well, not upscale market rate. So, oh, okay. You know, so something for everyone. There would be some affordable housing in there. There would be some, you know, housing that might be developed to a higher standard that folks want. I mean, basically right. something for everyone. That's what makes a community. I mean, there are areas that aren't as affluent, and there are areas that are very right. affluent, and most people are somewhere in the middle. And that's where this project would oh, have been. Perfect. So, you know, so it got a little personal. It got a little political, and. You can't let that stuff, I mean, you know, in business, in life, um, people are going to take their shots. And you keep things in context. Right. And so I kept it in context. Uh, we're moving forward. Good. So I mean, it depends on what the house does. Now, the it, I read somewhere, and maybe I misunderstood, that you sort of turned it over to the council. That was my putting, intent. I mean, that's what I wanted together. to do at yeah. the time. Um, <clears throat> again, when we, you know, the big meeting that everyone objected to, um, I wasn't asking anything in the city council or the city. Um, didn't want any money, didn't want any land, but I did want them because, you know, I had been working on this for about nine months and little snippets of it were starting to get out in the public and people were starting to ask me about it. We had options on several parcels of property on Main Street and I thought it would be a good time to just let the council know, hey, I want to let you know what right, we're doing. Right. Um, I don't want anything of you, but I think it's important that you know so that if you hear anything, you don't have to wonder. Right. And, uh, you know, so that's what we did. And I think that got a little blown out of proportion, uh, you know. And the problem with me, Pat, is that I work hard. You do. And I'm usually four, four or five steps ahead of anyone else. And sometimes they get the attitude like, okay, what's he up to? Because they haven't kept up with me. Right. Well, if they just ask what I'm up oh, to, oh, it's like, and don't There's fill in concept. the blanks on your own. Give yeah, right. me a call and ask right. the question. I've right. never refused to answer a question. So, you know, so we had originally planned on turning that over to the city, quite frankly, because it was really, it was starting to take up 20, 25 hours a week. And I'm like, you know, this project is real, it has legs, and it's getting bigger than, than, than Barry me. Barry so needs a grocery store. Well, Barry needs a grocery store, and Pat, listen, my vision for any downtown in Vermont is housing. Yeah, It's right. the only thing well, that's, that's going to say that. We have retail, had several you know, shows, and that's what they talk about. Well, they just had housing. a big debate in Burlington about yeah. this, too. It's a very similar project. Amazon is real, yeah. and they're only getting bigger. You know, we were having the, con the uh, conversation before we, we rolled tape yes. on this thing about, you know, Amazon and Whole Foods, and it's like, oh, what's that all about? Yeah. You know, Amazon isn't going anywhere. Online right. retailing is yep. only going to get bigger and more competitive. Because I think that when I call them, I, I envision them packing what I'm ordering right then because you hang up the phone the next day, it's at your door. I mean, yeah. how, how convenient is that? So they're, and they're going to be same day in a matter. Yeah. They're already doing that in major cities, same day really? delivery. Wow. They're using courier services that can do it. And... Um, they're starting to privatize some of those. Yeah. And they are services. less expensive. Yeah. Well, but, but it, I, you know what? And for me, it wasn't even cost. It, it's funny. I don't, the only thing that I've bought from Amazon in two years 
Um, and this is, and when I got it, I'm like, okay, this is the ultimate oxymoron. It was three books on making local downtown successful. And I bought it from Amazon. Amazon. I'm like, oh, when they came, that? I'm just looking at the books and What's I'm like, wrong with this you're an idiot. <laughs> it's like, why didn't you? Exactly. It's like, but yeah, I mean, it was the convenience. Yeah. Um, someone had told me about these books and I'm like, okay, before I forget, I want to, and literally on my phone, I, you know, I, I got the books. But That's it's right. like, no, that wasn't. That wasn't the way I should have done it. I should have gone to our local bookstore, who's always so helpful. Who is a great bookstore. Yeah, and said, you know what? I don't care if it takes three weeks. I'll still be here. Right. But unfortunately, we were, you know, yeah. There's no no defense. I I was going to say, we were leaving for France. I literally wanted the books in two days, so I had them to read while on vacation. But that's not an excuse. No. You know, you've got to support local I always make a commitment to buy every Christmas present locally, and I've done that. Well, 74 years. Though. We do our best. I mean, we try to support all of our local businesses, and not just at Christmas, but, you know, throughout the year. Um, don't do the Home Depot thing. I mean, the development company does not buy from Home Depot. Yep. We buy from Allen Lumber. Good for you. Absolutely. Oh, all You know, all the time. I and mean, we employ, and that's where I, I feel good about what we've done through development. It's not just the value of our buildings, but you got to understand that What's behind that value? Every dollar behind that value was a local tradesperson right. or, right. you know, or Goes a local store. Whether it's, you know, Tim the Paint Guy at Barry Paint or, you know, we try to support right. local. That's good. Abishan Hardware, I consider them local. They're yeah. they're family owned, and granted, they're a big chain throughout New England. But I got to tell you, having gotten to know them. They are, Bill Abishan is a wonderful man. I met him at my campground this last summer. <laughs> we're blabbing, Isn't he great? We're blabbing, blabbing, you know, and I'm, well, where are you from? Oh, well, you know, and I said, I'm from Barry. Oh, Barry. And so he said, well, I, I said, what do you do there? I said, what do you do there? He's a, he's a great guy. <laughs> he is. And we just, I mean, so stop in someday. I haven't he's done all, it. He's you know, he's all about family. My campground in Maine. There he is. So. That's funny. Yeah, he, yeah. I, last time I saw Bill and Barry, he was there because um, a family member of, uh, someone here in Barrie who works for him had died, and he, oh, so he was came sure. up from Massachusetts. Very supportive, to attend, I'm sure. Yeah, the kind yeah. of people they are. Yep. So has the council put this ten member group together, or it's just no? I pulled of, that back. I mean, quite you? frankly, I said, you know, after after seeing just the <laughs> the storm uh, that went along with it, I said, you know. I reached out to Bob Stevens. Bob and I, do you know Bob? He I do, I know the, of him. Yeah, I know of him. Developed the Putnam, he's doing yeah. the Putnam Block in Bennington, did the Brooks House in Brattleboro, and Bob has been working with me on this. And just a brilliant guy. And um, yeah, we both agreed that okay. if you want Let's this project to do sink, it. Do it yourself. put it in the lap <laughs> of the council and that'll sink it in, in no time. So, yeah. you know, we're continuing on our own. And right now, uh, man, a, a lot of things in Vermont are right. on hold with this, uh, you know, this tax package that the House and the Senate passed. Right. Right. The, you know, the House, you know, eliminated new markets tax credits, eliminated federal historic tax credits, uh, you know, got rid of the exemption on private activity bonds. The House version is an unmitigated disaster for development in Vermont. I'm going to have to sit down and... And we're talking yeah, about uh, the federal... Senate, Senate put some of it back, right? but they got a little ways to go. And we're talking about the federal, um, the federal yeah, but not ours, yeah. tax bills. Yeah, because yeah. you yeah, don't on the tip. <laughs> you got a tip You'll district. Jump it around. Tip district in that's hard to say. Tip district tip in district. Barry. We do. And then this last year, they actually created uh, the ability to have maybe six more or something. Yeah. So where is the tip district in Barry? Is that this uh, area? The, well, the tip district in Barry is pretty it's much like our downtown. entire downtown. Yeah. Yeah, so we have done a few projects with that. We've done the Enterprise Alley project, which was a you know Brownfields remediation right. project that people think we redid a parking lot, and I'm g- mm. glad the parking lot looks great, and it does. It they looks only fantastic. Knew what was underneath. Now, I mean, all of the work right. really took place right. underground, where there was you know PCBs and yeah. you know a lot of nasty pollutants from uh, dry, right. cleaners. dry cleaners, and that's right on the river too. Yeah. So yeah. that's not a and yeah. that big plume. bubble. If you saw the the yeah. geographic layout. Um, I used to see it in transportation when I was working up there. This giant bubble, which wasn't getting any smaller. No, it was it just kept pretty creeping nasty. along. Yeah, it was bad. But so you know, we fixed that problem. So when you you know go through the list of the projects, um, you know, I, I think what I'm most proud of, Pat, if I you know when I look back at my tenure, and you know, what I'm most proud of is that you know we changed attitudes about Barry. We changed attitudes not just from um, you know people outside of Barry, people at the state house and state government but also people from within Barrie. I mean, yep. you know, we stepped up to the plate and we swung for the fences and 
you know, we did some good work. And, and not just me. I mean, I, I have worked with so many good counselors and people right. like you, oh, and, you and people in state government. And I look back over the last 12 years, and I'm just grateful for the people that I got to know and, and, and work great, with. And well, we had a lot of fun. I love Barry. I, well, I, <laughs> people in Berlin are mad at me, but we don't have a downtown. And I was no. brought up with a downtown. That's where you went. Yeah. In Berlin, if you don't have kids in school, they're working on some kind yeah. of downtown. But, you know, right. you need that place to gather. Well, Absolutely. You, you certainly changed the way that I look at, at Barry. Um, Woo! Not having, <laughs> <laughs> not having grown up there, but like having traveled through a fair amount. Nice. Um, you know, I think it's come a long way. It looks way. beautiful with the lighting and everything when you... Yeah. yeah. Um, and just yeah, that alone, I mean, just doing yeah. the lighting uh, yeah, it's beautiful. makes a whole uh, now, huge difference. Look, we Speaking did what Barry deserved. There are so many good people in Barry and so yeah. many hardworking people and generous people uh, in Barry. You know, I, I guess... I hope I did that. I hope I just, I hope I gave Barry yeah. what it deserved. And I hope I instilled in them this, this can-do attitude where if you pull people together and everyone works hard, yep. you know, good things are going to happen. Yep. Maybe and Steve McKenzie people. is awesome. Yeah. Steve McKenzie, Carol Dawes, yeah. oh, you know, Carol. those two are, those yeah. two are my, they're yeah. both my rock. I mean, yeah. Carol is so kind to me because, she, you know, I'm not a detail guy. And so she'll, you know, nudge me during count. Oh, can't counseling. do that you procedure, that. you know. And she's <laughs> she's very cool about it. Uh, and you know, Steve, there's no one who works harder. Oh, that's the Barry. truth. I, I work ho at home at night when I used to work for Barry, and I'd send an email like one o'clock from my bed because I'm I don't sleep. Two seconds later, yeah. he would probably be in the office. He'd send me oh, a he'd response. Be in the office. I'm like, where are you at my desk? I'm like, good yeah. God. And he has, you know, he's really been a godsend. Yeah. And, and it was, honestly, when you look back, I mean, we had made considerable progress towards getting, I mean, it was a, you know, series of two and, two and a half years of meetings to get the Main Street Reconstruction Project yeah. in the funding queue and get it done. You know how that works yeah. uh, from, from a previous career. That was hard, but... Um, Have they improved? I was going to ask you, and I think later on, which I'm probably messing myself up, but <laughs> under, that when you mentioned about underground, like yeah. with the laundry, there was some serious uh, structural damage or uh, that needed to be repaired with the oh, yeah. sewer and the water. Was that all fixed, and has it helped with flooding? Um, it, well, it was domestic. First of all, it hasn't... Uh, there, there were a few phases of it. The, what you were referring to was our main trunk line, which right. was a two yeah. foot, 24 inch diameter domestic waste line. I yeah. mean, it's where you flush your toilet, that's where it goes. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that ran, what everything that ran on the hills outside the city ran down Main Street main to street. the sewer treatment plant Wasn't on the north end of town. Wasn't looking good either. <laughs> no, and we had telegraphed that and there were a number of structural deficiencies and we right. had models. I mean, basically, if that, um, if, if that had, if that trunk line had failed and it was, you know, right. 100 years old and full of deficiencies, it would have filled every basement in the downtown with raw sewage, sewage in a matter of about four hours. Right. Yeah. So it was. I pretty know they they dire. sent through a um, telescope or whatever so you could yeah. camera. Oof. Yeah, and I would just tell I them. Wish ah. I, had, I wish I had missed that meeting. <laughs> yeah. That's too much information. No, it was. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty bad. So, but how the main street, how the reconstruction project got done, it's 16 feet down. Oh, wow. So when they looked at ways to replace that main line, yeah. you can't have a 16-foot trench and work in it safely. So they had to go this way. Oh. Well, they w had to go so far that way, it was both lanes of the... And then they figured, well, we ripped up both lanes anyway. We might as well do the sidewalks. So what started well, as simply an infrastructure right. replacement became we yeah. got to replace everything. Oh, well, that's beautiful. It, it's really nice. it came out really good and, yeah. like I said, really proud of that because, uh, you know, we started talking about that when I was a senior in high school. <laughs> That's how long that project had been installed. And when I campaigned, when I went door to door and talked to folks, as you did, you know, and I said, well, what would you like to see done? I mean, it was all, you know, Main Street was one or two on the list. And uh, so I was pretty de determined to get yeah. that done. And I'm proud of the fact that with a group, working with a group of great people, we did. Good. So is there anything um, else on the horizon for your development company? Any, any other projects that you're working on? I know this, this, one, that, this one particular one is taking up a lot of your time, but is there anything else that you know, people should be paying attention to or can you know, hope for in the next few years? Well, um, you know, we're always uh, working with great businesses. We always have, we're always doing something. Yeah. So, you know, today, 
Uh, Karen, uh, we purchased the Reynolds house. Oh, I, I heard that. That's and, great. Yeah, Karen is working on that. That was an old B&B, had suffered a fire, sat vacant for beautiful two years. Home. It's a beautiful, prominent home and uh, it was owned by the Reynolds family. I mean, it was owned by one family for decades and decades and decades. And so then it was abandoned for two years. Karen bought it. She's doing the planning on that. And they're actually getting started on construction right nice. after the first of the nice. year. Uh, we're also working on, this is really cool, first of its kind in Vermont, a hydroponic grow facility. Interesting. People are always like, they're growing pot. No, oh. they're not growing pot. <laughs> now, maybe they could, yeah. but that's not the plan. The plan is it's a company called Series Greens. Really? Uh, great, great guys. And uh, they, Times Argus did a story on them. And I they remember recent, that. And then one of the news channels, I'm, I apologize, I forget which one, recently did a story on them. But basically, it's vertical. They can grow 1,500 pounds of greens a day. Wow. It's even though in terms of the production output, they uh, output, they have a uh, facility currently in Chittenden County that's a prototype facility, and so they've been working on that. And uh, so they're going to do 12,500. And where is this located? In that China? is uh, up, it, it's up off the, it's in actually in South Burlington. Uh, it's located in a warehouse in South oh, Burlington, cool. but it's a smaller facility. And they were looking around to, you know, basically yeah. put it on steroids. And so Too they're bad. coming to Barry. So that's going to be a really nice. exciting facility cool. because it's the first of its kind. And if the, if the modeling proves out, they'll actually be one of the largest producing farms in Vermont but only in 12,500 oh, square feet. I wrote their name down for future yeah, guests. C-E-R-E-S. <laughs> yes, I got that. Yeah, so this is Great. like one of those. Greg uh, Kelly and Jacob Isham. Oh. So this okay. is one of those vertical grow, like where they have the mats that are uh, that the plants grow horizontally. Yeah, they're actually like, tubes. Yeah. Um, so there's 16 foot tube, and the plant grows out of the tube, but up. Interesting. And what's growing out of the tube is what you harvest. And in the tube is the uh, nice. is the roots. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. No, I'm impressed. I? I really don't. You have as to. Close, as close as I got to was the upside down tomatoes that grow. Right. From that, that we've done at our house. But it's but. Uh, you know it's cool technology and it works. And it's uh, interestingly, uh, right after you know when I when they first contacted me and we started you know talking about this, I didn't understand a lot about it. So I started doing a lot of research and and one of the first news stories that I came to was the USDA investing $25 million to develop a facility in New Hampshire. You know, these mm. facilities are springing up all over the United States as yeah. they're, you know, looking at a growing population and looking, looking at ways as, the, as people become more aware of where their food comes from. And they're more yes. concerned about, well, okay, right. you know, and in Vermont, believe it or not, we're an agricultural state, and yet we import 90% of yeah. our food, right. fresh food. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've talked about the farm to plate concept here yeah. on the show. Exactly. I love that. I just, yeah. I met the chef who wrote the cookbook on uh, farm to plate um, at Bear Pond Book this week, um, weekend. And I was just, I was, oh, I'm, thank you, thank you. I just think it's so cool to sit in a restaurant like Cornerstone and you read, oh, the milk came from Bruce Brothers up, yeah. the, up the road. How cool is that? Well, and another piece of this, too, that I think is starting to make some of these things viable, more viable, mm -hmm. is, you know, more and more people are moving into cities, and, and that's kind of coupled with this organic food movement. Mm -hmm. um, and because organic foods don't keep as long, uh, you know, as, uh, as foods that have pesticides in them or preservatives, you have to move the food source closer to the consumer. Exactly. And so that's where you see a lot of these things like innovations in hydroponics where they're growing food indoors or they're growing them on rooftops in cities yeah. mm -hmm. um, because they have to be able to get a lot more yield out of a smaller and smaller yep. area. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. so the technology is fascinating. It's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jacob is a seventh-generation Vermonter, oh, former wow, military. Serious. I mean, they're just... They're just great we'll guys, and when you talk about the development company, well, we, we love working with small businesses. I mean, we're, we're, we work with some nationals and some bigger ones, but, you know, it's the ones like this where you really kind of feel like you're making a difference and helping, you know, helping someone right. along with technology. Those are the ones you really feel good I about. I think we really pride ourselves on the entrepreneurial spirit here. I think mm -hmm. we encourage it in Vermont because yeah. um, the businesses are always clean and always, mm -hmm. um, you know, could be expanded and hire more people. Good deal. Absolutely. So, yeah. so be excited. I have to get them on the show. Absolutely. So.
Why don't you do your show remotely? You can do it right oh, here. Oh, well, we, uh, we're looking for, oh, can we put in a plug for sponsors? We're looking for sponsors so we can do that. So there be careful. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Back off now. You can do stuff um, on location. Yeah. So I, I just, we had talked about your, we hadn't talked about Metro Way, mm -hmm. and that's one of your big projects too. And you have apartments in there, or you used to. Maybe you don't do that anymore. No. Have you given that? No, Metro Way is a commercial industrial facility. Yeah. It's one that, it was the former Rulo Granite Company. Right. And we bought that about 12 years ago, and it was bone empty, 100,000 square feet. Um, the Rulo family had sold it to a gentleman. Um, unfortunately, he struggled, lost it to the bank. And when we bought it, it was 100,000 square feet of empty space, pretty much right smack in the middle of our town. Yeah, right, exactly. So it wasn't a pretty picture. And, uh, you know, today, flash forward, uh, you know, it's that great. facility is, mm -hmm. which is where Series Greens is relocating. Oh, That okay, facility, good. you know, we've brought in, you know, some like Vermont Travel Trades, who owns Vermont Stone Art. They manufacture stone agricultural, um, excuse me, architectural products. Um, you know, that was an existing business in Vermont that simply expanded. But we've welcomed, you know, AccuWorks, which was a Toronto-based yes, company right. that wanted to come into the U.S., uh, you know, we gave them a home. Right. And since then, they have gone on to open an office in New Hampshire and an office in Houston, Texas. That's great. So, they were but they're still based here. That was my, my pledge to them as I said, look, Vermont has to be your home in the U.S. So I don't care how big you get. Good for you. This has got to be your headquarters, and we'll work with Good you. Good job. Yeah. That's great. So, because um, I think they, AccuWorks was involved in one of the big projects in Barry City. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember. We went to a ribbon cutting, and, and the... Uh, Secretary of Transportation was there, and uh, Enterprise Alley. Enterprise Alley, yeah. that was great. They were very, very good people, and they did a great job. Yeah, they and you did. know, they're the folks who respond and protect our waterways. If you, you know, when they're like I said, they're a remediation firm, so yeah. they have these huge vac trucks. So if unfortunately, oh. you know, a tractor trailer yeah. flips over, Seen has an accident, around. they're the ones who are pre preventing fuel from getting into our waterways, and right. they do a great job. So. Well, just cleaning up one of those when they crash is a is yeah, a, is a and they job they know their itself. stuff. I've watched them respond, and uh, you know, and again, they've sponsored a lot of events in the community. Yeah. Um, I, I just like small businesses. Yep, I, I, I love working with entrepreneurs and businesses and people who have a passion and are. Well, they're a little more energetic. free thinking too. They're not so. Uh, focused on the the way we've always done it, or well, the, they're the willing to the try new things. Not exactly. quite like government, where it's like, yeah. nope, that no, peg no, doesn't no. fit in this hole. <laughs> Throw the peg out. <laughs> right, right. Buy a new one. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I, I I like them, and I think that's what I attribute some of our. I mean, I'm not conventional, and I know that. Um, I I hope I'm reasonable, um, but you know, I'll try. If something doesn't work, I'm willing to try something new, and right. I'm not necessarily someone who you know you got a script and you stick with it, and you never vary from the script. Uh, and I think that's been part of our success. I mean, who would have believed City Place? Um, you know, again, that was a project much like Park Center, uh, a project that I had worked on conceptually myself. Right. And then um, when the uh, state of Vermont was looking for a home from the, for the Vermont Department of Education and, it, you know, the project kind of got legs, I knew I had to hand it off. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, well... Okay, I can't, I can't lobby state government to locate the Vermont Department of Education and others in this building if I own it. So, what, so I handed it off to the city. The city right. created an RFP. A right. number of people responded to the RFP. We picked due construction. We got it done. Done. Yeah. I was cool. there for the ribbon yeah. cutting, I guess. It was in 120 excellent. days. Yes, right. That fast. That was, that's people, pretty quick. People couldn't believe that we got it done that quickly. And, and believe me, it was a lot of uh, long days and... Uh, you know, longer nights, but we got it done. Positive Pie is in there. And, Positive uh, Pie yeah. is in there. Uh, hospital has their billing functions in there. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty proud of the effort. Yeah, that's great. Good. That's very cool. Yeah. So what was your, your vision uh, when you were coming into office as mayor, and how has that kind of changed over the last several years as you've, you know, kind of seen uh, city government from the inside and, and learned, you know, <laughs> what some of the challenges right. are? Well, you know, the vision, you know, the vision really, the vision hasn't changed. You know, the vision was to, I recognize what Barry had not done well for the, you know, 20 years before I took office. And that's, and that's not a criticism I want people to understand. It's not a criticism of anyone who's ever held office. Because sometimes, merely, you know, mere circumstances make it hard. You know, Governor Scott has got a tough job right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not reflective of his ability or his team's ability, but 
you know, he, he's got a harder job than some right. governors right. have had. Maybe some would argue that those mayors had a harder, you know, time, circumstance than I had. But the vision hasn't changed. The vision is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, any, any city, any village that wants to survive, you've got to be developing. And for the previous 20 years, we hadn't been growing our grand right. list. That's right. And if you don't grow your grand list, this, you know, two things control your property taxes, grand list and the rate. Well, if you have a higher grant, if you can raise the grand list, the rate can go down, or at least the rate can stabilize. If you do nothing to raise the grand list, but costs keep going up, and they're going to go up, um, you know, all you can do is raise property taxes. And unfortunately, mm. in Vermont, in too many municipalities, that's what people right. have done. That's right. Yeah. So we really focused on, I focused, I like to build things. When I was chairman of the school board, we built a new elementary school in Barrie. So, you know, I... I believe in inclusive development, but I believe that for any community to survive, and especially now, the way retail is going, uh, you know, I think downtowns that simply rely on retail to, to drive people to the downtown, they're making a huge right. mistake. Yeah. Right. Smart downtowns are going to develop houses, you know, housing. Housing should be, you know, job one. Develop office space and those things. And then what, when you get those people in your downtown, Believe me, the retail will take care of itself. Yeah. They'll have plenty of customers. Well, and and, and food service too, because yeah, you know food absolutely. service yeah. is is feed us will come. Well, if you have office space downtown, if you have foot traffic, mm -hmm. food service can thrive there. Your retail is going to be better off, and and food service is one of those that you're a little more insulated from online retailers, mm -hmm. unlike you know traditional brick and mortar retailers where you're very susceptible to what's going on in the states around you, you know, mm -hmm. for example, New Hampshire, uh, or um, what's going on in the online retail environment. But for food service in particular, if you have that foot traffic, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're a lot more insulated, and those can be really flagship businesses for a downtown. Yeah. And they have been in Barrie. I mean, we've got, you know, for the longest time when I first took office, people would say, you know, we can only support uh, two restaurants in our downtown. And if Whoa, a third wrong. one opens, well, there yeah. were only two. Yeah. And so I looked at the history of it, and they said, okay, every time a third one opens, somebody goes out of business. And now we've got, you know, four or five, yeah, six that Yeah, you've got the quarry, you've got the uh, firehouse. Yeah, and they all, Wonderful. you know, and they're all working hard, and I yeah. know they're working hard. Yeah. Um, but they're doing a great job. Yeah. And, and I think if, if Barry just continues, you know, that's my biggest concern, is that someone will take their eye off the ball. You know, we've worked hard. Believe me, the work in Barry isn't done. You know, people, you know, pat me on the back and say, you've done a great job. You know, I just got things started. Right. You know, I didn't finish anything. You know, the work never stops. The work will be there when the next mayor comes in and the next mayor after that and the next mayor after that. And you have to constantly innovate and grow right. and build. Well, you, you create an excitement that's pretty cool. I hope so. Uh, well, you have to. <laughs> uh, did you start the... the um, uh, uh, mayors Coalition, the Vermont Mayor, or who, how did that group, uh, just so folks know, I think most of the mayors yep. belong to this group. I think there's only one or All two. All of them do. Oh, they do. I All of them do. There was a couple slower ones to join, maybe. Well, there, the there are some who are a little less active, but yeah. but no, we, have, oh, we often have all, I mean, there's only eight yeah. in Vermont, but we have the mayor's meeting, and it was actually originally started by Bob Kiss way back when. Oh, really? Good I served him. with Bob Kiss when he was yeah. mayor of Burlington. I always yeah. liked Bob. We couldn't have been more different politically, exactly. but I always found him, but Bob and I would always find common ground. Yeah. We'd, we'd talk it out, and Bob was just always willing to compromise, as was I, and we always found common ground. And then when Bob left office, it kind of fell by the wayside. And uh, a number of years later, I approached uh, Moreau, uh, Weinberger, and John Holler, and I right. said, you know, Let's I think it. this was a good idea. We have common issues, and especially now with the opiate crisis, I right. mean, we've got, we've got a lot of common ground here. Isn't that scary? Yeah. So, you know, Moreau is different politically than I am. John is different politically than I am. John is different dif politically than Moreau. But I'm like, you know... We have enough problems. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure we can find one that we all agree on. Well, I think you're taking year, on the water, the water quality, yeah, clean which is, water, uh, that's not political the, at all. The importance of funding that, uh, <laughs> yeah. TIF. Well, you know, where it gets political with clean water, everybody agrees on it, but now we have to agree on how to fund it. Fund it right. right. So let's right. just find something that's fair. And right. if you got reasonable people seated at the table, we'll find a way to fund it. Uh, you know, TIF districts, uh, the importance of not only maintaining the ones we had, but giving other communities the opportunity. We found that important. You know, you know the governor's uh, $35 million housing bond. We all supported that. You tackled school spending, too, at, at some point. We, one point we're, which is, we're looking which is hard a dandy at school thing. spending. I mean, yeah. we've got, 
Now, Pat, it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, and I understand, you know, these aren't easy topics, but when you've got this steadily declining student population and you're not changing your delivery model, something's got to exactly. give. Exactly. You, know? you keep doing the and same thing. And you know thing. what? <laughs> and listen, would I want to be the one to, to there? I go to our elementary school. All of the teachers there are dedicated. They're smart. They love kids and right. they love teaching. Would I be, want to be the one to look at that sea of teachers and say, okay, well, you have to go and you have to go? Right. No. Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't want to be that yeah. person. But unfortunately, uh, and you're going to see it this year, you know, with the projected, yeah. you know, looking how everything right. is panning out right. and, and the headlines of recent days, um, somebody's got to make some hard yeah, decisions. Right. Right. Well, and what's so interesting, um, you know, because I've done a lot of work in, uh, education, uh, particularly in education financing. I follow you, stuff. Vermont. And uh, it's a really interesting conundrum uh, because, you know, you're right, we've lost uh, 20,000 students over the last two decades, and that trend is going to continue for at least another two decades. Right. Um, but what's also interesting, you know, we've had a difficult time, uh, you know, meeting that challenge with structural changes in our school systems. We have mm -hmm. these different types of um, school districts that aren't, you know, easy to, to put together in right. terms of the way that they operate. Um, but the other thing that we haven't done is we haven't really looked at our financing system to see if our financing system is also matching with um, this decline in the student population. And one of the, the interesting things coming out of this discussion, you know, there was a Vermont Digger article last week, we're looking at a 9.4% increase. Right, increase. Um, and that's a 9.4 cent, not per cent. Um, so it's a 9.4 cent increase on the property tax mm -hmm. for um, statewide education fund. And, and what I think is interesting about that is half of it is because of a deferred spending from the legislature. Right. So it's uh, one-time funds and reserve funds that, they, that are no longer available, uh, which basically means it's a manufactured um, tax increase. Self-inflicted. Self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, when you look at what school boards have done, school boards have held their spending with that 3% for mm -hmm. this past year, which is fairly impressive given the amount that they're spending on these mergers because um, mm -hmm. there's, um, there's legal fees associated with that when you're, when you're even just investigating these things, let alone mm -hmm. actually going through merging. So they're, you know, there are increased costs up front as we go through this Act 46 merger process. Yeah. And the deadline for filing something was like, what, just the other day? And there's mm -hmm. a few towns I know, like mine, <laughs> that didn't and mine. And my, Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. That didn't submit anything. Right. No, I mean, there, you know, like I said, you know, change is hard. Um, it, you know, it is. And I, and I understand that. But, you know, and, and, you know, you've heard it a lot from the governor, yeah. but he's, he's dead on. I yeah, mean, well, something has to give. This yeah. is not. He was in business himself, so we know yeah, his first this thing. is not a sustainable model yeah, on right. any level. Right. And if you were to, if you were to look at Vermont's student population, if we gave you a map and we, you know, made it perfectly rectangular so you didn't recognize it was Vermont, and we just put dots representing students and we said, okay, come up with a, you know, come up with a delivery model, come up with a funding model. It wouldn't look anything no, exactly. like right. it wouldn't look anything like, like, what, we have. like, like what we're doing now. Yeah, right. and it's right. you know, and I get it. Change is hard, but you know, for the future of our state, we have to keep it competitive. Yeah. You know, I was, I was thinking when you were talking about the Verm the Vermont Mayor's Coalition. You're leaving. Loris left, yep. and um, John Holler's leaving. Yes. Those are three key yep. cities and people. Are, do you think it's gonna? hopefully continue, because I thought that group, you did it professionally, you actually had facts, which I found mm -hmm. uh, exciting. Mm -hmm. You had all the facts to, to support you. So yeah. the gun People didn't always thing, agree with us. Well, I was going to yeah. say the gun Inking. control thing, but we won't, <laughs> we won't go there. But anyway, but you always, even then, you were professional, you gave, you gave the facts, and mm -hmm. I mean, what more can you ask for? And it was interesting to know that the cities were behind you. I mean, it wasn't just, it was the, all these people right. behind you. You know, what we found is we found, uh, it was really interesting when we started laying out our legislative priorities and visiting with the legislature. What kind of, I think, even took us collectively by surprise was just how much clout we had in the state house. Well, yeah. that's, it You know, really, when we showed up, you know, senators and, and, yeah. and representatives were listening. And, and again, and we, and we tried to do it in a very professional and polite yeah. way and respectful way. 
But I think what they recognize is, hey, you know, these are, being a mayor is a great job because you actually get to affect change and see it immediately. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, right. you're boots on the you ground. Get it you're done. not, and again, I'm not disrespecting, you know, anyone in the legislature, but sometimes in the legislature, you're dealing with things that you don't really have the opportunity to see put into practice. Right, right. You know, so you're dealing with change in motor vehicles or funding mechanisms. Well, you're not in motor vehicles right, every day. Exactly. But when you're a mayor in a, in a small community or in any community, because they're all small in Vermont, you see those changes immediately and you right. learn, okay, what works, you know, right. what doesn't you know, work. So good and, and bad, so you can fix the bad. Oh, yeah. And, and listen, I, you know, I, everybody good. makes mistakes, and over 12 years, I've made my share. Yeah. Well, and I, I would echo that, too. I think, um, you know, I was really impressed having watched w the, the type of work that the group has done, mm -hmm. um, particularly things like, uh, like clean water, which yep. is not, um, which doesn't affect everyone equally. You Correct. Know, it, it's, uh, in, and a good example of that is Barry and Montpelier are upstream yep. on the yeah, Wisconsin, right? right? Exactly. It's Burlington that has to deal with, the, uh, with downstream. Sewage and stuff, right. right? And, and, and Burlington's an offender, too, and so is Rutland. And it's yeah, all... but Chittenden County, it's a revenue generator. So, yeah. you know, ruin Lake Champlain, and but see what guess happens what? to our economy. People in Alberg will right. be affected exactly. if you ruin Lake Champlain. If you don't do something to fix the problem, you know, exactly. school funding, you know, yep. it affects yeah. everyone. Yep. Okay, it affects some people worse than others, but collectively, it's not having, it's having a very detrimental effect on our state. Lake Champlain will just impact the entire state's economy. That's, and I think Absolutely. people don't get it because it's yeah. not here, it's there. Right. It's in Burlington. But it's a, it goes to the image of the state, right? And, sure. And if you have a lake that's green, right. it's a, that's, that goes to damage the image of the state. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, on Lake Champlain or if it's Lake right. Memphremagog or if it's, you know, name the lake. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. If all it takes is one image in That's the right. front page of New York Times, and You're your done. brand is da damaged forever. Exactly. exactly. So I just want to ask you, you uh, have very new people on your council. We do. And when is your last day? Is it March? March, or, uh, March 5th okay. is my last day. But and who's coming? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 22 days, go three hours. Party. And, um, and you yeah. have brand new people. Yes. Uh, I don't know how much they know about the inner workings. Uh, and you're preparing your budget. Yeah. How are you thinking of getting these people up to speed to really, because that budget, what's it, I have a 14.7, 14 yeah. 14.7, that's a <clears> lot of money and a lot of responsibility for a city. You've yeah. got so many departments and stuff. Uh, I think, you know, first of all, the councils that I'm serving with, and it's been a bit of an adjustment as we get new members and they got to kind of feel their way right. through it. Some at times get more frustrated than others. I've got to do, I mean, going forward, I've got to do a better job kind of keeping the council calm and keeping things in perspective. As far as bringing them up to speed, you know, they need to bring themselves up oh, to speed. Yeah. It's their job. They were, and they know that. And I'm not saying there's any issue with that, but it's not, you know, it's not, and I, because I don't have to. I don't have to crack the whip. Right. I mean, they're all, they all sit there willing to work hard. So my job is simply to keep, you know, keep the conversation productive and make sure they have right. the information they need. And as far as the rest of it goes, I think Hopefully, they'll keep They're up. good people for sure. <coughs> but, they are. Um, um, but it's just hard, like when you were talking about the uh, the pool, mm -hmm. it's hard, to, it's X dollars and here's the, yeah. but you need to know how those X dollars impact yes. the rest of the, the city and all of the important things that every other department's doing. That's a big decision. Look, it's prioritizing yeah. that. I mean, I've always believed that about governing. Mm -hmm. Um, everything's important, right. okay? Everything is. If, if one person has a concern and they come to you, they're important. Right. They right. elected you. They deserve to be heard. Right. But it's not all a priority. That's, you know, that's really the difference. And right. most people, when I've had to speak to them over the years and I look at them and I say, well, you know, I understand that you'd like your street paved and I understand you <laughs> want it done today, um, but here's what I look at. Right. Here's the list of streets in poor condition. Yours is rated fair condition. Right. Um, we have to prioritize. And when you explain it to people politely, they get it. You know, yeah. most people, most people, people say, oh, it's a thankless job. You know what? 12 years, I've, I've never felt unappreciated. I've never That's felt right. that people didn't appreciate how much I love Barry just like they do and how hard I was willing to work. Right. So I never looked at that job as thankless. That's right. Well, never did. I think you've done a great job. And Thanks. I think, of course, the people really do pay attention to the budget. You've had a yeah. few years of, <laughs> of uh, no. <laughs> and back yeah. to the draw. Well, you, saying no is know, oftentimes listen, the hardest part. But exactly. that's okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the they process. Look. And so you go back. I mean, you know, what do you think? You've never heard 
Darren, I think I'm going to the Patriots game. No. <laughs> you, know? you know, interestingly, people ask me what changed and, and, and why I didn't run for mayor this year and why after, you right. know, six terms, why, why now? And, and, you know, it was kind of interesting. The decision, Pat, was actually made in April. Oh, really? Year. Yeah. Because I have heard and, you say that before over the and, years. But now if you speak to, you know, Councillor Herring, Councillor right. Batham, uh, Councillor Tupper Giles, you know, it's different councillors that I spoke to. I right. said, no, I... And, and the reason was really simple. It wasn't people were like, well, was it the seven days article? No, it, it wasn't that at all. You I mean, you get used to the criticism. Um, it was that I asked Karen and she said no. Wow. I mean, it was just that. And I don't wait. And I, Karen is awesome. Well, she knows But you. every year, about a year before election time, I would say, so, you know, what do you think? You know, election, I'm up next year and just got this budget passed and I'm up next year. And what do you think? Another term? And she would say, you know, hon, whatever you... Whatever you want to do, you know right. I'll support you. And she has. I mean, she has been, um, I think there have probably been better mayors in Barry than me. I don't think there's ever been a better first lady wow. than Karen. I That's think nice. she's, you know, she works with the Opera House. She works with our house and advocates for sexually abused kids and families. Right. Um, you know, she's been a great fundraiser. She's the triage person. I mean, the number that you see on the city webpage is our home. Well, if you call it from 8 to 8, during yeah. the day. I'm not there. She you is. Karen, right? <laughs> she'll answer the phone and she'll triage your call and she'll say, well, here's, you know, here's what I'm going to do and I'll call you back. And then I get a note right. when I get home and she says, you need to call this her. person back, but I fixed the problem. Here's what you're going to do. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so all taken care when of I you. asked her this time said, and no. I said, so, you know, 2018, I'm up again. What do you think? You know, she very nicely just said, I wish you wouldn't. Yeah. I wish you'd spend, well, you know, you've worked hard and I'm proud of what right. you've done, but it's time for you to, you know, maybe ratchet it down right. 10,000 feet right, right. and live more like a human being. Okay, so now tell me, <laughs> the politics, though, are in your blood. Yeah. So anything in the future? Wouldn't say no. Uh, <clears throat> boy, um, Karen, turn off the TV for a moment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Don't listen, Karen. You know, I, it, really depends on, it, it really depends on how motivated I am. Um, you know, some have talked to me about running for lieutenant governor. Yeah. I haven't ruled that out. Um, at this point, that would be a huge, you know, but what I, what I really have to think about is what I would do with the office. I mean, I obviously changed, you know, the mayor's office when I, when I took office right. and, right. and, you know, I, I put kind of my own brand on it. I, I don't think anyone would say it didn't work for Barry. It did. We were able to advance the community. It's just how I roll. Yeah, right, you know, when right. I go into something, I don't, right. I go in 110% and I try to work as hard as I can. So. What I've really got to think about is how I could help and whether, you know, my personality, my management style, my brand of getting things done, um, you know, whether that would work well. I, I, I'd vote for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I think, I think uh, I've actually had a number of Democrats approach me and say, well, if you decide to, we'd like to form Democrats for Lausanne. Um, you know, and that's get, really the highest compliment. You're going to get the compliment. newspapers going here. Listen, Dave, we are. Dave Delacour be uh, uh, We're a small uh, state, Pat. Yeah. Everybody's got to work together. Yeah. You know, we really do. I mean, over the years, I've supported, still stay in touch with Pete Shumlin. He was a lot of fun. And, I like, uh, he was. You know, he was a lot of fun, and he didn't say yes to everything. Right. But he said yes to the things that made sense. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I mean, in some respects, I so enjoy working with the Scott administration. They're tough in terms of the finances. Yeah. I mean, they watch the finances like a hawk. Yeah. Uh, but I've really enjoyed it. You know, it's hard to let it go. Yeah. And, uh, and, it really and the is. governor's got all of his directors and managers looking at the finances, too. Everyone yeah. we've had in here to interview, they've always said, this is what we've got to do. I just saw the clock, and I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so, 631 with yeah, Governor Scott isn't exactly. just a slogan. No, exactly. It, no. It, it's, all it's a way it of governance, and it's going to work for Vermont. That's right. Uh, we have to call this show to an end, and I am really sorry. I think we could go another hour, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thank we'll you. We'll see you Thanks next so week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.